doubling the excitement. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Random Distractions Home Theater Update video. Uh, in one of my previous videos, I talked about how I use the Dayton Audio uh, exciters in my ceiling uh, to add Atmos height speakers to my system. I used a pair for each channel and was really surprised at how well that they sounded, uh, but the volume was a little low. So I wondered if maybe adding an additional pair would help with the volume. So I decided to get eight more exciters and add them to my system to see what it would do. Also, stay to the end for an update on the Buckeye Amps uh, fix for the distortion issue. So like before, I went ahead and prepared the exciters uh, the day before I was going to do the install. Uh, but doing this now a second time, I would actually probably suggest just having the wires ready, but not connect them to the terminals just yet uh, and wait until uh, you know, you're ready to install them. I needed to move some wires around once I was up there. And unfortunately, they're really you know, difficult to take out of the terminal. Uh, you almost feel like you can break them, uh, which actually did happen uh, in the previous uh, video where uh, one of the terminals did break. If you do have to remove them, uh, the one thing that I found that helped uh, the best was to kind of wiggle them side to side until they come out. I did also buy some T-tap terminals uh, to be able to connect the additional pair uh, to the main wires. Here's one channel to show what it looked like. I did go ahead and test them out, um, and when I went to the first uh, front channel, uh, I realized by touching them that two of the exciters weren't working. And I was like, well, that's, that's not good. Uh, so I went to the second front channel and unfortunately it was doing the same thing. Um, and so I started to wonder if maybe the T-taps were not the best thing uh, because uh, in both cases, it was the exciters that were tapped in uh, to the main uh, channel. However, when I went to one of the rear channels, uh, I realized all four of them were working and checked the other rear channel and the same thing, all four were working. So I went back to the front channel to you know, look at the wires, make sure anything wasn't loose. And when I disconnected the T-tap, that's when I realized that the male tab had bent a little bit. So it actually wasn't connecting uh, correctly into the female connector. Um, so I bent it back and uh, connected it, making sure that it went in right and they were all working, which is good. So I went to the other channel and funny enough, it was the exact same thing. Uh, the male connector had bent a little bit, so just reconnected and everything was working fine. I did ask about the wiring in my previous video because um, I wanted to make sure that I maintained the 8 ohm load. I had put up the diagram of what I was thinking of doing for this uh, situation, which is what I ended up doing. Unfortunately, the, and thanks to Captain Tech Review for pointing this out, uh, the way that I'm wiring them now is actually bringing them back to a 4 ohm load. This did make me wonder if I should still have them powered by the Anthem MRX 1140. Uh, it is rated down to 4 ohms, so that's not a problem. Uh, however, it probably would work a little bit harder than, you know, driving an 8 ohm load. And they were being powered by the lower power section, uh, and I could probably take one of the higher power sections to help with one of the channels. If you're not familiar, the MRX 1140 has two uh, amp sections, a higher, higher power section, which is 140 watts by two, and then a lower powered section, which is 60 watts by two. The higher section is usually used for the bed layer, and then the uh, lower end section is used for things like high channels, uh, just because they don't need as much uh, power or, and are not used as much. Ultimately, I decided to use the Emotiva Basics A5 to power the high channels. Um, it can definitely handle forum loads and still uh, stay really cool while doing it. This did require uh, moving some of the equipment around uh, just because of the cables uh, needed to be able to reach uh, to certain spots. Um, so that took a little bit of extra time. This also meant that my surrounds needed some sort of power uh, since they were not gonna be connected to the Basics A5 anymore. Um, so decided to use the MRX 1140 and I did use one of the higher power sections uh, at least until I can get something else. With everything connected, it's that time again for Arc Genesis. And you know, for the most part, Arc Genesis has been running really well uh, lately, uh, but I did run into an issue, uh, but this time it was on me. So my thinking was that I needed to use height one uh, for the front uh, high channels and height three for the rear uh, high channels. Uh, because typically, you know, when you see them, that's how you associate them. And actually, even when I was testing to make sure that they were making sound, I did have to activate height three in order for the rear channels to start making uh, some sound. However, when you're running a proper calibration, um, you only actually need to use height one and height two, uh, but for height two, you wanna specify that it's the rear high channels. 
Once I figured that out, everything ran well, um, and I compared it against the first run uh, to see if it, you know, adding the additional ones actually did help bring up the volume. Um, but it, it did, uh, but not as much as I thought it would. You can see on the charts that they do bump up a bit, and you can also see the frequency response and how well ARC is able to control it after calibration. Since it's only set to calibrate up to 5000 Hz, uh, there is a bump in the higher frequencies, uh, only because that's how the uh, audio exciters are responding in my room. For the speaker levels, this only shows to be between half a dB and 1 dB difference from before. I didn't show this before, but for the crossovers last time and this time, it set them at 80 Hz. I will say that in actual use, they are louder than what they were before. Uh, in fact, they actually kind of sound a little bit louder than the rest of my system. I think that actually might be due to that uh, bump that's after 5000 Hz, uh, because it really is just mostly the treble and the higher frequencies that are, are coming through a lot louder than the rest of the system, uh, because uh, the rest of the speakers roll off <laughs> a little bit better than what the exciters do. So I may have to do some fine tuning there. In the previous video, I mentioned the cost. Uh, so uh, before it was 361.46, and then adding the additional eight exciters uh, was 166.36 from Parts Express, and then getting the TTAP terminals from Amazon were $11.90, uh, bringing the new total to 539.72. I mentioned in that video that that's actually not that bad considering that some speakers uh, might just be around that much just for one. Um, however, at this point now it's getting close to the ceiling speakers that I was originally thinking of, uh, which are the uh, RSL C34Es. And before tax and shipping, those would come out to be around $596. So based on that, I will probably stop here with the exciters, because um, like I said, in order for me to go back to an 8 ohm load, I would have to add an additional four speakers to each channel. Um, so I don't think that it would be worth it uh, to go uh, that route, because uh, at that point, you know, it'd probably be better to look at other alternatives like either in-ceiling speakers or the, you know, the high channel speakers that are angled that would be on your ceiling. And that's of course only if I feel that it's necessary to change that. So in summary, adding the second set of exciters uh, did help with the output. Um, it also kind of helped the, the even out the frequency response as well. However, there is that bump after 5000 Hertz, uh, which unfortunately does not match the rest of the system. So uh, I believe that that's part of the reason why it feels like they're louder than the rest of the system. And so I'm probably going to go back into our Genesis and increase the filters to go above 5000 Hz and see if that helps uh, even that out a little bit better. I'm still happy with what I'm experiencing with this, uh, but I'll provide an update after I do the changes in ARC uh, and then living with it for a little while, you know, watching a couple of movies and uh, things like that and see if I still feel the same way. <laughs> One thing I will say is that my wife is definitely happy that there's no visible evidence uh, that there are additional speakers in the living room. I did want to show a clip of what the high channel speakers sound like from the main listening position, uh, but just with them by themselves. So uh, no other speakers and no subwoofers turned on. I also turned off Arc Genesis uh, so that they would be playing full range. And here's that clip. It's probably hard to tell from YouTube, but um, honestly, they sound really good. Uh, like I said, I was really surprised at how well that they sounded before, um, and they do sound louder than what they did uh, before adding the additional ones. Uh, but like I said, I'm not gonna go anywhere uh, past these uh, at this point. 
Before I go, in my video about the Buckeye Amp, I did mention that uh, there was a review that was done and they found that it wasn't performing as well as other amps that were using that same Purify module. Uh, it had to, something to do with the distortion levels going up higher than usual. Um, however, it was still like super low, so it wasn't actually something that was noticeable uh, when you were using the amplifier. Dylan from Buckeye Amps was working on a fix, and as soon as he found out what it was, he was going to let us know. Well, I did finally receive an email from Dylan recently saying that they figured out what the issue was and that they would be sending out uh, the parts to be able to fix uh, the amplifier. So once I receive the parts, I will do an update video on what the problem was, um, how I was able to fix it, and then retesting it to see if I notice any difference uh, from what it sounded like before. So look for that video in the future. Well, that's all that I have for this video. I would definitely appreciate a like, of course, on this one, and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next one drops. Until then, I hope you have a good one.